We are charged to protect these kids. Go. I'm a police officer for North Minneapolis and coach for the North High High School. Go. These kids don't trust cops. It's definitely a difficult time right now. Kind of weird, but I'm building bonds with police. The violence is nonstop. You can hear the gunshots. When them lights flicker at 7 o'clock, you ain't hearing none of that. Five minutes, fellas. Five minutes. I right, appreciate it, man. Oh, okay. You're getting that bed in before the boom, oh, huh? Yeah, yeah, LA all the way. <laughs> what? Oh, come on, man. You know it's Boston, baby. KG, I understand why you said it, but it's LA. Jay, are you serious? You know what? It's LA. Why are you standing up? Because it's LA. L you know what? You ain't scared me. Let me tell you something. That ain't it's enough. Boston, Boston, Boston. It's LA. No, nah, man, thank you for coming, man. Been trying to book you for a minute, man. You know, a lot of the stuff I always tell people, man, people think I'm actually, uh, it, like, in, uh, putting a lot on it when I speak of you. But a lot of people don't know that. Man, you're, you're probably one of the more natural leaders I've ever met, man. The first thing I want to ask you, man, is where you get that from, man? Where you get your, your, your natural alpha leader, I guess, yeah, leader skills from? Because every time I see you, you're in that same mode wherever you're doing. KG, growing up in Oakland, California with my father. My father was my coach until I got into the 10th grade. Mm. And my father always taught me the same thing. I had to be a leader. If you be a follower, you're nothing. You know what I'm saying? I can't follow nobody. Mm. I got to be a leader. I got to make my own decisions. Growing up on the streets of Oakland, all my friends were dope dealers. Mm. Mostly all of them was dope dealers. Now, if I wanted to go their way and do what they do and get in trouble, then that mean I'm a follower. So I had to be strong and say, yo, look, y'all go ahead and do what y'all got to do. I'm going to go home and go to bed. Y'all handle y'all business. Mm -hmm. And when I get them to respect me that way, when they be like, okay, that GP like that. Gary like that. Mm -hmm. He going to the crib. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He ain't going to sit back here and do that. So I had to be strong that way because I don't want to follow nobody. I don't want nobody to tell me what to do, how to do nothing. Because if I make a decision to mess myself up, KG, let me mess myself up on, the, on my decision that I made, not because I'm thinking about what he said. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, man, you're going to be a punk for that. Or you're going you gonna to be less than that. Well, I'm going to have to be less than that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to tell me what to do. And that's just something that I've always installed in me as a young kid. And that's why I'll always be like that. Uh, you think growing up in uh, Oakland gave you a certain DNA or a certain tone about yourself? I do. I, I, I think growing up on them streets and going to different uh, neighborhoods, going to, going to jump over people's gates and mm -hmm. go to their neighborhoods and try to take over their basketball court mm -hmm. and say, I'm coming from 4-1, this is where we at. And they say, that's Peyton's crew. You know, that's young Peyton crew. He got his four. They're going to rock with us, and we're going to see who win, and they take over the block. Yeah, I think that that's what I got. And I grew up that way. And when I got on the basketball court and when we were playing the pros, that's why I was always talking crazy to people, because I wasn't afraid of nobody. I wasn't backing down to nobody because that's the way I grew up. And to back down, and I always say this, KG, you got skills, I got skills. Mm -hmm. So what? We both in the pros. Facts. We there for a reason. Mm -hmm. You got pick number one, I got pick number two. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a reason for us to get picked so high because they thought we was that guy. Mm -hmm. And we got to prove that way, so I'm not backing down to nobody. If my skills can match your skills, I can get out with you. Coming up early, I've always heard the infamous stories of the Jason Kidd, Jay Kidd coached us, uh, Paul and I in uh, Brooklyn. Heard that story over and over about how you made him better. Who was your Jason Kidd? Who made you better? Who got on your fuck? I know we all got that one nemesis and that one person that nobody in here knows. Who was that one person growing up gave you problems that you can remember? It was good. I mean, you probably heard of Demetrius Hook Mitchell. Oh, shit. Huh. He had a legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. The legend always gave me problems, man. But we got so close because I couldn't guard him because he was real. He was 5'10". He was stalky. 
he can get off the floor and he can get it. I used to hate playing against him in high school. He wanted to bounce, right? Yeah, he had a little bounce yeah, yeah. and stuff. And five ten. I, yeah, he was five ten and, and get it, man. And he was the one that I really hated to play all the time. I hated to play all the time. But we got so close that me and him started kicking it together, and then mm. I stopped playing against him, and then he started playing with my father, so mm. we started playing together. What people don't understand is he was in so much problems and doing so much things in the streets. My father took him in as, in our senior year, and he lived with us in our senior year. And he was at my house every day, mm. and we became real close. But to be honest, KG, the person who really I hated the most, that talked about me all the time, and I really, really didn't, I, I always wanted to get at his helmet was my father. Because mm. he always told me that I wasn't nothing. Mm. Even if I had 40 points, he was like, you could have 60. You ain't did nothing, man. Go on about your business, I'm about to bounce. And then he would drop me off at the crib. And then I always just go to the house and think like, you know what, I'm gonna get at this dude helmet, man. Because the next game, I'm going to have 56 or 60 on these dudes. Mm. And I'm going to go out to the helmet. And then I'm going to see what he say. And then when he say, when he say something else, I'm going to be like, okay, now you're going to get somebody else tortured. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was the dude who really put this really in me. He really installed that in me because he used to always downgrade me. How much of, um, <clears throat> how much with your own, with your own kids? I know we copy and rinse a lot of things that our parents did for us. And a lot of things, I, I know I've copied and rinsed 50 things my mom did, you know what I'm saying? How much of things you copy and rinse from your father that you instill in your, in your own sons to this day? You know what, KG? None. None. Mm. Because the, 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 the era is different. I think where we made our mistake at is because of the way my father treated me growing up, Mm. I wanted not to treat my kids the same way. Yeah, we love you. And I had to go and become somebody and become rich and give them too much. I think that was our fault because we gave them a silver spoon. Now they don't know how to work hard. They don't know how we did when we went to the playgrounds mm. and played on the playground. Now what they got to do is they can get 15 pair of tennis shoes, go on an AAU circuit, get down on every floor. I didn't have that. I didn't have an AAU. I only went in the summers and only played about 10, 15 games Damn. and try to do that and try to get out. And now when you talk to them, it's all about, man, I know what's going on. Man, you know, why I always gotta be hearing that? Because you they father. And now they talking about you done fathered me so long, now why I gotta listen to you on basketball? So now I let my kids beat themselves upside the head. And then you're going to come back and talk to me. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to be like, okay. Humble. Didn't I tell you? Humble. Didn't I tell you? I'm going to humble you from that way. I want them to beat upside their head. So they don't listen right now. And I let them beat themselves upside the head. That's why it took my son a little time for six years to get where he at now. No doubt. Because he has to understand to humble himself and go through the, all, the satis uh, you know, all the sacrifices and that thing to get where he at. No. And I'm glad he got over it. But it's still another humbling experience because they gave him a lot of money now, and I'm gonna see what he does now. Man, he's gonna kill it. Shout out to Lil G, man. He's doing his thing, man. That's my dog, man. He's good people. He's yes, always sir. the same. Get a great offer courtesy of KG Certified and BetMGM, the king of sports books. Sign up using bonus code KG1000, and your first bet is risk free up to $1,000. <laughs> The Bet MGM Parlay Specials, daily odds boosts, fan friendly promos make it the best place to bet on all your favorite sports. For real. Download the Bet MGM app today or go to betmgm.com and enter bonus code KG1000 and place your first bet risk free up to $1,000. Yes, I said it $1,000. Nothing beats a W at Bet MGM. Oh, Oregon State, man. Because, you know, Cal right here, you got Stanford down the street, you got all this finagleness here. I've always wondered, damn, man, why the fuck G didn't stay home, man? Why, 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 why'd you go to go, uh, Oregon State? KG was like this. None of them wanted to recruit me. It is what it was. Say word. They didn't want to recruit me at all. And then all the schools that was around, 
When I went to the BCI, which was almost like the AAU during my time in the summer in Arizona, at Arizona State, mm. I went and started killing a lot of the New York kids mm. and a lot of the, the, the Chicago kids, mm. a lot of the Florida, Philadelphia kids, kids yeah. all the East Coast kids, mm. I was killing them in these tournaments. St. John's jumped on me. St. John's jumped on me tough. And I wanted to be in the Big East because I used to watch it on TV. I wanted to play with Walter Berry. I wanted to play with uh, Chris Mullins. I wanted to play with Willie Glass, uh, 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 Weddington, all them type of guys I wanted to play with. So I committed to St. John's. Say word. I committed there. And next thing you know, I was about to sign. We was in the in men's Greg Foster. Greg Foster was going to UCLA and I was going to go to St. John's. And kind of, kind of second call. Lou kind of second. He called. He called two ten minutes before, saying that he may he, he can't do it because he don't want to mess his recruiting up in the East Coast. Wow. He's gonna have to take the little kid Broadnex from the East Coast because they never recruited past the Mississippi. And I said okay. Oh wow. And that's what I did. I said okay. And the coach or Rutledge, who was assistant coach, who recruited me. He was like Gary. Coach making a big mistake. That hurt. It hurt bad. And you know what I, what I did, KG? As I, I cried about it as a kid, went home, and I sat down on the couch with my mama. And I said, you know what? I don't think I'm doing the right thing at the age of 16, 17 years old. Mm. Won't you just pick the school? You said that to your mom? Told my mom, and my yeah. mom picked my school. You didn't want the responsibility anymore. I didn't want the responsibility anymore. I just said... It's too emotional, right? It was just too much. And then if it would have happened again, KG, that would have broke me down to not go to the school I wanted to go to. And then after everybody understood that St. John did what they did, a lot of schools came back mm -hmm. because they were starting to go to their second choice to get where, because I was gone already. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the schools came back, and my mom liked Ralph Miller a lot because she reminded him of her, because she he was really disciplined. He was always going to be on somebody. And then the school was in nothing but like a little farm. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. A little it's, farm. A, it's in nowhere. It's always nowhere. And she wanted me to get out the city, but it was the right decision she made. I'm glad that she made that decision. Going to Oregon State and staying for four years was a great thing for me. You get to Seattle, and you and um, Sean Kim get together. Right away, you knew? That y'all had chemistry, like right away? Because that's the first thing that stands out. When I see, when I see any highlights with you two, you see the chemistry right away. My favorite is when you somewhere and you just, and you and it's it's times, <laughs> Gary, they got you just not even turning around, dog. <laughs> like, like, like talk about talk about the chemistry between y'all two. One of my favorite duos of all NBA history is Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. KG, that was, it was, it was, it was, it was first thing, first sight, me and dude. He came and, 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 and seen me playing in college. Mm. Cause, uh, He's older? Who's older? I am. You're, you're older I'm than his? Okay. So Bernie Bickerstaff was recruiting us. Mm. You remember, he was a head coach and he was yeah. always, he, yeah. came, he was recruiting me since I was a junior. That's JB Bickerstaff's father, guys, yes. for everybody who's listening, okay? That's for all y'all, right? So he was the one recruiting, uh, recruiting me. He used to come to all my games and when I used to get out to the games, he would sit out there and he'd do me like this. And I was like, okay, whatever. You know, how, how y'all gonna get me? Y'all winning. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be in the top three, of, two, two right. three picks. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how y'all gonna get me? So all of a sudden, they fooled around and did it. Oh, wow. And Sean, he brought Sean to a game because we played Washington University because we was in the Pac-10. Yep, yep. So they played Washington. They went and they, a lot of them came over and seen it. And they were really impressed with what I was doing. And... Sean, as soon as I got there, Sean just embraced me. Me and him started hanging out all the time. Mm. And we was together all the time. And then in practice, I always should tell him, I said, all you got to do is just say one word, and I know it. And then I told him, once you say, whoa, I know you're going to be there. But if you see me stealing the ball, just start sprinting. Mm. Because I'm going to get most of the 50-50 balls. Don't worry about it. I'm going to rip whoever, and I'm going to get most of them balls. Wow. And once I take off, you need to take off too, mm -hmm. and all I'm gonna do is throw it up. And he said, "If you throw it up, I'm gonna go get it, G." And I said, "Okay." Is he the highest jumping um, individual you've ever played with? Ever. What, what was Sean Kills? If we had to guesstimate his vertical, what would you think his vertical would be? Shit. Oh, this is some real shit, y'all. This ain't no sauce. This is real shit. 
You know what? A 60? KG probably up there, man. You know who I really don't, I really can't, I say, I mean, me and you played with him in the Olympics. Vince Carter. Vince Carter, yeah. See, I think them the two dudes that we already played for, they probably up in that era of where they can where they can go get it like that, and they'll just do some stupid stuff. Them was one of the two best dudes I ever played and jumped high. And when we was on that, that, that video, when he went up and dunked on that dude, when me and you were sitting out there, and we looking at that, me and you both had our eyes wide open on that picture. That boy went up. It up like Superman. I said, it kept Whoa. going up. And he, I said, dunk it out then, man. You remember? So them two right there, they got to be up there. They got to be up there. Sean Kell, man. Well, <clears throat> to me, probably one of the most underrated fours in our league, man. We, 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 we forget his package and what he's done for the league. Talk about um, growing with him because y'all was the very few duos that was growing together, you know? Steph and I, we was, we was, we was looking at you. We was looking at, you know, obviously Stockton Malone. We was looking at some of the duos, right? Right. But y'all duo was kind of like our duo, you know, two you know, know each other, yeah, same yeah. thing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, man, it was yeah. Just just talk about the growth of that, because you know what's growing as y'all growing, the team. Right. Nate come, y'all get uh, uh, Hershey. Uh, Hershey. Y'all, y'all get y'all Sam y'all get Sam, y'all, y'all get when y'all start building all that. Irvin yeah. Johnson, all these pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then y'all become this thing, right? But just talk about the early growth of you and Sean, and then how how y'all was growing Seattle. Right. So, KG, that was a big deal for Seattle because the simple fact is is that they had two superstars, and it was me and Sean. And they had to build around us. Mm. So what they did was they, they started getting the pieces to build around it. Mm. But we had to be the two that be the one to show the veterans who are older than us that we can lead this basketball team. And we started leading that basketball team. It started getting easy. Then the, the veterans started like Detlef. He started, yo, G, come on here. You got to come on. You got to be with us. Mm. Nate started talking about you got to be with me. Mm. You got to do the things that you have to do. But we had to show it and grow up. And once they started putting that on us, and then we had a coach in George Carl yeah, he believed who it. said, yo, this is our this is our two that's going to take us to where we got to do in our promised land and start saying, I'm not going to say nothing to y'all, but y'all better do something on the floor for me. Mm. And that's where I looked at it. I said, don't call plays. Don't do none of that because I'm going to be like you on the floor. Mm. I'm going to run the right sets when we need to. And he gave me that opportunity and he gave me that love. And then I start performing and me and Sean start performing that way. One of my favorite stories of you is in the fucking playoffs and I told the story <laughs> on all the smoke. <laughs> and people thought I was actually joking. If you go back and look at it, you get the play from George, right? <laughs> Steve Javi says something to you, you take the play. Hey, get him in here. <laughs> Telling George to sub somebody. As he's saying that, Steve Javi says something. And you go, hey, you see the hand on the hip? Call it, motherfucker. You standing right there. Hey, four up twist. Come down. You get in the free throw line. I'm up here. I'm looking at you as I'm guarding Vin. Come up. Go on out. Hey, shut the fuck up. Because somebody yells something at you. Cussed out the <laughs> flip light. Flip calling the play out. Four up twist. He coming up. Thing. I ain't coming out. Been back his ass there. And I'm sitting there like, yo, this nigga's talking to, yo, look at this nigga. This nigga's talking to his coach. He took the play. He talking to Steve Jack. My coach said something. The nigga behind the bench. <laughs> Where would you get that from? Where would you get that from? You know what? Being on that playground, KG. Say word. And you know it's a gift because Coach Carl used to always tell the other coaches, right? Why Gary sitting over there on the on the um, scores table and he not in the huddle? And George was like. Leave him alone. He hear everything I'm saying. And then I walk out and say, why y'all worried about the fuck I'm saying? What the fuck I'm doing over here? I bet I play the right, call the right play. So leave it alone. Then somebody else will say over there. And I say, yeah, I called him a motherfucker. That's right. And I do from there to there to there. And then I go to the ref, Javi. Man, why the hell you didn't call that call, man? You see he got his hand on my hip. Why the hell you doing it? Why you letting him do it? You know what I'm saying? And then I start, and then I walk over when we about to take the ball out of bounds, and I'll be like, yeah, your ass over here talking in the stands, I get your ass too. You know what I'm saying? So I do it all in one. 
You know what I'm saying? So I, everybody, and like what I coach now, KG. No man. way. No fucking way. No <laughs> way. No way. You know I'm at the university oh now. Oh, my God. University. No way. So I coach that now. So all my, all, my, all my coaches do this. They was like, I'm ready. Going to go back to the next play when they have practice that they just did. And then they'll bet. They bet on oh, within and then the coach. Stop it. And I'll go back three plays and be like, what the fuck did y'all just do this time? I told y'all how to do this. Now, first how we started it was when you messed up over here, then the play came over here, then the play went over here, and then they be, and then all the coaches be like, told y'all, give me my money. I knew he was gonna remember that. And that's just the way it is. It's just a gift to remember and mm. see everything around. Because that's where the trash talking get. Mm. If you can get into everybody's head and they pay attention to me, KG, then what they gonna do? They gonna focus on me and don't focus on nothing else. Mm. Then it makes me be in control of everybody. Right. Because I'm gonna play more and more better. Mm. I'm gonna get better and better. Mm. You not. You gonna be focused on me. Then all of a sudden I get you in foul trouble. Gotcha. You sub out of here. Then I'm talking to the, 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 to the, to the referee. He's starting to get on my side and give me calls. See? And then all of a sudden, the stands, they over there, they feeling like trash because I'm killing their team. Right. So I'm, I'm winning. It's a win, 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 win. I watched this. I watched this whole thing happen as he just displayed that so y'all don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> y'all heard it. Who gave you the glove, man? Who gave you that nickname? My cousin. My cousin. Where you get that from? 1993, KG. We were playing the Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference Finals. Mm. At that time, Ke Kevin Johnson was a premier point guard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. he was averaging 27. He had just got first team all league. Yeah. He was doing his thing. He was averaging like 10 assists. It's 93, you said? 93. Okay, this one, Chuck is Chuck. Chuck is Chuck. You know what I'm saying? We playing against him. Right. He just won the MVP. <sighs> so yep. I'm killing K uh, uh, Kevin Johnson, Johnson right now. I'm holding him to like 14, 12 points. Mm. So we go and win game six and force a game seven. That's when Chuck went crazy. Yeah, Chuck went crazy on us in a game seven. He shot about 60 free throws. Miles, right. You know what I'm saying? But my cousin called me after the game. I had like 24, 10, and about five, five rebounds or whatever. Kevin Johnson had about 12, mm. six, and, and four, or something like that. And I'm eating him up in the, in the, in the, in the TV talking about it. Mm. And my cousin called me on like, glove, glove. Like, man, what the heck is this, man? And I hung up the phone. He called me right back. He's like, cuz oh, don't, don't hang up the phone, man. It's your cousin, Glenn. I said, man, what's up? Why you talking to me? Glove. Glove. He was like, man, me and my frat brothers sitting over here, and they say, man, you got Kevin Johnson like a baseball in a glove, so tight around him that he can't even move. Mm -hmm. I said, man, that's how my, my D is really, though, no, because I do get on people helping like that. And ever since then, it ran with it. We started putting out gear. We started doing this. Came, uh, uh, and McMillan came up with this. And then all of a sudden, we started selling everything in the NBA. And then the NBA took off with the nickname. One of my, y'all can look this up. You're in Indiana. Fur Fleming, and, and you are chirping. They, they, they yapping. I don't know what's being said. Fur Fleming takes the ball out. Two, three, drill. I think, I think you, you, you let him get some rain. You bloop, you pick him. You lay it up. Y'all still chirping. He gets it back. You know, Vern Fleming from New York, you know, he take yeah. pride, got handled, old school cat, but he can get it up. I think you pluck him again, back to back, G, and you lay it up. And the first thing you do, I never forget that. You like, glove, <laughs> bitch. Yeah, yeah, that's what I used to do to him, though, okay? So that was in the good days, man. You know me and you, we had a good era. The right. 90s was the thing, man, right. because we had teams where everybody had good players on the team, right. even your team. Y'all had four, and three and four dudes who mm -hmm. could make the all-star team. Yeah. We did the Lakers, Indiana, Houston, New York, right. Houston. Everybody was, was pretty good, man. And that's why I used to like our era, because we could talk shit and everybody have fun with it. I got to ask you this, man. You, you're, such a, you're such a big brother to everybody. Uh, I ain't know you and Cole was that tight till we all we all uh, was at um, uh, Oakland for the All Star game, mm -hmm. and we had a dope ass practice. I never forget this. And um, usually after practice, you know, guys got to go do something. We got to do community stuff, or you got to go do interviews. But you're going like this, and for like maybe five minutes, man, 
you, 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 you took me, well, I just sat there and watched, but you took Kobe and you went through like a, like a two, three minute like tutorial on some, on some denial shit. You went denial and then you went post. And, but y'all was at the top of the key and you was, what made you go through that? What made you knowing that I got to guard this kid one day and what I'm giving him could actually turn around and, you know, bite you in the ass. Mm -hmm. And I was so, I'm being, I'm being honest with you. I, I would, I would feel like um, certain matchups, I couldn't, I, couldn't, I, couldn't give, I couldn't give the whole slate. You know what I'm saying? Young guys that was coming up, they're just as eager. I couldn't give them the whole slate of A, B, and C, right? Right. For that notion right there. What made you, what made you do that? Knowing that you can turn around this kid. And you saw Cole was going to be something different mm -hmm. early. But what made you do that? Knowing that this can possibly turn around and I can be the victim of what I'm telling him. KG, Kobe was a way different. He was a different kid. You know what I'm saying? It was, I was in Shout 10 years, man. I was in 10 years more and plus in the NBA at the time. And that's when we were in the 2000s. Yeah. It was like my 10th or my 11th year in the, yeah. in the league. Yeah. And Kobe didn't have a fear of nothing to ask nobody to get better. Thanks. So he came by me and he was like, big bro, man, you be doing this and that and that. I really want to learn this, man. I really want to learn it because of you. And when he said that, that took something out of me and took something in my heart that a kid with his ability and knowing where he was going, Mm -hmm. wants to really learn, and he doesn't have an ego. Right. He doesn't have an ego. And I don't mind that. I don't care about him knowing how to do it and stop it, because if he knows it, it makes me better too, KG, because I got to learn how to stop him now, mm. because I gave him the game, Facts. so I got to learn how to be somewhere else doing to show him something else. Facts. And it didn't really bother me. And me and him got so tight. How about say after that? Y'all got close as we shit. We got tight. That. We got really, really tight. And then especially with me going to the Lakers right, and right. mentoring him with what he was going right. through during the right. time, we got like this. I talked to Kobe two weeks before he passed. And uh, we were talking about the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. you know, and what was going to happen and, and when we we're going to be there and stuff like that. And he was very excited. You know, he was very excited. Mm. And that's how close we were. You know what I'm saying? And then he got off the phone and he said, man, I'm about to call my, I'm about to call my nephew, man. He been calling me about tennis shoes. And then he got on the phone with Gary and, and sent him some stuff. And, you know, that was my guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and it still hurts me to the day that he's not here on this earth. Right. And it, it's, it's just something that I had to do for him because I felt it in my heart. All right. Yeah, I got close after that. At the time, man, I, know, I knew him personally. I know Bane didn't trust a lot of people. I know he was very weary of people. I know he was super, um, I ain't gonna say shy, because he can be assertive when he wants to, but you know, we saw a different code, and we saw code grow up too. Right. And I just thought that uh, not only did he have the balls, but I felt like he, because uh, you can see him kind of building it up. And I can see y'all off to the side talking, and then when you went into it, I was just looking at it like, damn, Joe, this is crazy. And then obviously we were sitting there listening to you, and I was just sitting here thinking like, man, because you did the same thing in the Olympics when we was in the Olympics. You was teaching guys and going through stuff. And I was just sitting there thinking, does this, I mean, now we're before throttle, we speed through this, and you're a coach. Mm -hmm. Well, KG. You Bro, know. your dad was everybody's dad. Right. Um, your dad was everybody's coach. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're coming off. You're coming off like, like I said, man, you're a big brother to everybody, dog. It ain't never been a time I couldn't call you, talk about anything, and have some solid advice. I just talk, I'm, I'm, my question is, has, do you think all of this has prepared you to where you were at today, with the yes. coaching position? Yes. You know, KG, being around you guys as when y'all were younger and we were on the Olympic team and we did this type of stuff, me knowing that I was older than all of you guys, I was the oldest one on our Olympic team mm -hmm. and I had to take responsibility for a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. that was going on there yeah. when we were going through, you know what I'm saying? But... As we think about it, as my father raised me as a coach, I got that mm. from him. You know what I'm saying? I got that from him. I, I, I got a big brother thing because I had big brothers that did the same thing to mm, me. Okay. And KD, I, I'm really going to be serious about this. Is I think I'm more popular now with all you guys and a lot of other people than I was when I was basketball. Because the simple fact is I get to spend time 
with a lot of you guys. Facts, facts, facts. Like doing things like this with gotcha, us gotcha. Is, is things like this yep. because we get to know each other. Yep. It's a better know then. I think God put me on the earth to be what I'm doing now oh, wow. because I mentor now. You know what I'm saying? Basketball started it, but my life is really about helping younger kids and do the things I do. I coach the same way that I play. I'm very hard. I, I, I cuss a lot. Straight up. I get on them, and I make them become men. Mm. I care less about basketball because you're going to play basketball, mm -hmm. but can you become a man? Right. Are you going to be a man after we get off this basketball court and do something? Because basketball won't quit. It's going to be over probably in your 30s. What are you going to do for the rest of your life? Because what if you become 70 and 80? That's 50 more years from now. Mm. So what are you going to do? Am I going to teach you a lesson on how to do that? And then we play basketball to be fine. But I think the leadership and the coaching is basically just because of what God gave to me and my father. And I'm glad my, he gave me a dad like that because my dad put that in me. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to do that. And with you guys, when I see all y'all, you, Paul, everybody I see, we always good because y'all know I'm a, I, I got a good energy. Always. I'm never, I'm never with a bad energy You're with nothing. Always. I always get a good energy because always. I got to have y'all a good energy because the simple fact is, is that y'all look up to me as much as I look up to you. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's something that we both got to keep each other humble about. Mm. And when we go other places, other kids who want to be are maybe want to be looking up to us. You have to understand how to do the same thing to them, yeah. and that's just all it is. And that's why we stay so tight and so close is because we are humble and we are better that way. I notice um, in Atlanta, if you notice, all the rappers, they all they all work together. They all own each other's stuff. The the beat makers, Zaytoven, Metro Boomin, they always with little. They all do this, right? Mm -hmm. Oakland to me is just like that. Talk about how. Man, I mean, everybody in the Bay, from Short, from you, to Lil D, to, to E-40, to, to everybody. How, how, at least from the outside looking in, Oakland looks like they deal with each other. Talk about the continuity of, of Oakland. We deal with each other. As you mentioned, Lil D. Um, Shout to Lil D, man. Yeah, yeah my, my guy. Word. And you know, you know, me and him grew up together in, in, in high school. Mm. Uh, when, he went, when, he went to, when he went to jail... And, you know, I looked out for him a lot because I knew that was the thing to do because we all were together. No now that he just got out of jail, we just did a uh, Christmas drive just the other day. Oh, that's what's up. You know, back in the hood. He gives back to a lot of, a lot of needy kids. Okay. We look at Dame Lillard. His dad was uh, was big in our in our in our Oakland community too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then we go to Short. He just got a street. Mm. You know, he just, short, he just got a street. Him a street. Yeah, man, shot we had a too big short, day. Man. We had a big day out. Yeah, we had a big Say day out word. for him the other day. Uh, e40, who was from Vallejo, right down the street. Right. He does things like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, people don't really understand Bill Russell with the high school when we grew up in Oakland, oh, California. Wow, really? You know that? So Paul Silas, oh, wow. a lot of people, Jason Kidd, Brian Shaw, Antonio Davis. Right. You know what I'm saying? J.R. Ryder. J.R. Ryder, Greg right. Foster. Foster. A lot of us, we grew up in that, in that town. Cliff Robinson. Robinson. You know what I'm saying? We all grew up in Oakland, California, and we all so still close Damn. and tight. You know, Lester Connors, he from there, you know? So, you know, Leon Woods, who is a, right. is, is a referee right, now. Right, right. Leon Poe, Leon Poe. Leon Poe, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So we all come Damn. from that thing. Damn, and what, what Paul Pierce thing. don't really tell you, the, yeah, he was Pete born. Pete Pierce from the town. He was born. I forgot yeah, Pete Pierce. Tell you, he was 10, yeah. and then he left and came right, to LA. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? He really right. was born from in Oakland, California. So, you know, he from the town. So we all stay close because we're a net family. That's dope. We're a net family, man, and we should stay that way. Ain't no eagles around our, our way. We all did the same thing. We all came up, but we all went a different path. You know what I'm saying? Eddie so House. It's all it. Eddie House. Forgot about Eddie We House. got a lot of people that come from Oakland, man. man. We got a lot, you know, and, and it's real, real cool to have them type of people that we can look up to. Jason Terry tells me a story of, this is off, this is off shit, of how a bunch of Oakland cats came to Seattle and flipped Seattle yeah. and used the same town, used the same language, same whatever, 
They're like mirror cities. Yeah, and you know what? All them, all Jason Terry, uh, Jamal Crawford, Isaiah Thomas, all Isaiah, those guys. Yeah. All them dudes grew up under me, mm. going to my camps. Mm. And when I used to bring all the Oakland dudes there, we used to, I used to have a big benefit every summer. Mm. Every summer we used to have bow ride, the, 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 the game, uh, all oh, yeah, like 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 and Jordan used to do. Yeah, 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 yeah Jordan. Yeah, yeah. It was in a Seattle. Magic game. Magic, magic have a game. game. Yeah, magic used to have game. a game up there in Seattle. Game in there in Seattle. Yeah, mm. asked everybody about, and all the youngsters. I used to let them come and work it. Mm. And then they used to get to kick it, and then go to my go to my benefit and my dinner, yeah, and, and then get working in the camps. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So all of them got a feel of all of Oakland. So they was around the Oakland mm. thing. And then they all just became big, big, big deals to me. And you know, JT and Jamal, I raised them personally, oh, both wow. of them. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of the things where Damn. they just got a lot of that Oakland, Oakland in them, that Oakland street game in them. Are you watching the game, man? And if so, who, who you like in today's game, man? There's a lot of young guards out here. It's the only one I like really, really tough, and that's Ja. I like him a lot. I think he's got a lot of dog like me. Yeah. I think he, he doesn't back down to nobody, and he gets it. He get it. He, he get does. the game. I, I like what he just was saying just now. He's not scared of nobody in the West, and he's going to get that Golden State helmet on Christmas. You know what I'm saying? I like when he say stuff like that. He gonna get at they helmet too, and I think he gonna give him 50. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really, really think that it is. And there's only one defensive dude that I, I really think that, that models me. Who? And that's Smart. Mm, you like, I think, like Mark? I, I like Mark a lot. I think he got a lot of dog in him too on that end where he makes havoc. He causes a lot of havoc. Yep. He causes a lot of problems. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, them two young kids, man, I, I really don't like a lot. When you and G are watching other games together, or is the dialogue, are you sharing still, still sharing information? Is it still calling you to get tips? Is, is y'all still have that dynamic? Well, you know what, KG, to be honest, I think I leave my son alone a lot. Oh, wow. Because I want him to understand that he doesn't have to be in my shadow. Oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I told my son just this recently. I said, you're named after me. That's it. I said, you got to do something different. So now they like to go by Dwayne. He goes by the middle name. Mm. So he doesn't have to be Gary. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, they want to put young glove on a glove. And I think he's tired of that. Really? I think he's tired of being under my shadows. Oh, wow. So I always tell him this. He just got his number retired in, in junior college at his, at his, at his college. And I, I think Oregon State is going to do the same thing. Oh, wow. And I, I told him this. I said, let me tell you something. Don't think about being Gary Payton because there's only one Gary Payton, and that's me. I created you. You know what I'm saying? So now what happens is, is that you see that picture up there? That's me. Get another picture on the, next, on the, on, on, on the side of me and be right inside of me. Don't never think about being Gary Payton. Right. Just be yourself. Don't never try to think that you're going to do the same thing I do because I don't think you're going to do that. Right. It's only one person, right. and that's me. So I just named you after me. That's it. That's all that happened. Now you just put your picture up beside of me, and then you can say, man, I'm right next to my daddy. I did the same thing, and that's it. When I watch film, and, I, you know, I stop film, you know, we watch film, right? right? If you watch film with any NBA guy, he's going to stop the film. Just right. what it is. Easy. When I watch him play, not only is he as spread as you, but, Lord, he, he looks a little more... Fi he like he more, he more yeah, chisel. Yeah, chisel. Yeah, more chisel. Yeah, Jin's a lot more... He chisels. Yeah. He more chisel. But he's agile. He's moved with it. It hasn't, like, stagnant him. I, I, I'm, I'm in my head a little bit. I'm going 50 miles an hour here because... When I see a G, he used some of the same tools. He ripped through the, through the cavity. Mm -hmm. He get in your shit. He slide with you. Is, is that him watching you? Or is, or is part of, like, is it a part of a combination of, you know what? And I watch so much of my dad that I know to slide my feet. He never wrong in foot position. No. He never wrong. And, you know, and I like to stop like, it and yeah. check how he coming through. He, yeah. he gets through. He get the shoulder through. KG, I think, you know where I think he got that from is because with him, he'll never admit to, that he, he watches me. He, he won't admit that at all. 
but he does. He won't ever. He will never admit to you. If you put you, if you put him on his show and you actually We're going to find him. He'll be like, he'll no, be like, I don't watch my dad no, on man, My daddy, man, man I, he, he get that from me. That's, he'll say some silly stuff like that. Uh, but what he does is, is he watches a lot of, of me. I was going to say, he do you see yourself in him? That's what I was he trying to say. He watches a lot of me. And he, 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 he grew up around me so much. Mm. He has to. Facts. But the difference between me and him, uh, KG, he's more athletic than I am. And he doesn't, I want him to have more that offensive minded like that. Mm. But that's not his game. Gotcha. It's not his game. Gotcha. His game is cutting, defense. dunking on, and defense. Yeah, he's defense. He creates everything on defense. And now he's starting to knock that jumper down mm. in the corner. Yeah. He's starting to feel it. He's starting to see it. And he's getting better and better at it. And I think that's where he get it. His arms are way longer than mine. Wow. He can beat you up. He has a good knack for the game. Dude. He understands the Dude. game. He understands the feel of the game. And he knows when to go beat up on something. He knows when to block a shot. He knows when to take a, 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 a chance. And he'll get that steal or he'll get that block because that's what he does. You think his journey, because he's, he's really earned it. Yes. Ain't nothing been given to G. Right. He's earned it. Mm -hmm. You think his journey has a lot to do with his makeup on how he plays, bro? Absolutely. The dude, KG, me and you went through something different. Mm -hmm. We were coming, we were, we were holly totted coming out of high school mm -hmm. and this and that mm -hmm. and college and mm -hmm. stuff, and we get drafted mm -hmm. high. But when a kid like that don't get drafted, he goes through a journey through in high school, go through a journey through junior college, and then goes through a journey through college, has two great years at Oregon State, and then comes in the pros and, and struggles for six years of being in the G League, not staying on the team. And then all of a sudden, you get an opportunity with a good team in Golden State, and a, a coach like Steve Kirk gives him an opportunity, and he does it. His journey is different because he didn't know from every year where he was going to be. He didn't know that. He just thought, okay, am I going to be playing overseas or am I going to have a job? You know, I'm going to do something. And that's where his journey became and made him understand how to be a hustle and how to be harder and work harder. And that's where his journey came from. Man, I love it, man. I, I, man, I love what G's at. I love watching him play, man. I can't wait to, for him to get back on the court, man. Talk about um, 96, man, your first time to the finals. It's against Mike. Could you talk about that experience? KG, that was a great experience because you got to understand, 96, I won the Defensive Player of the Year, mm -hmm. and then Michael Jordan was a, 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 a MVP. MVP. Uh, we put it on, the, on, on Sports Illustrated, Mission Impossible. And they had me on there with it saying me guarding him. I got hurt, mm. and then I couldn't guard him. I couldn't guard him in the first Grunt. couple of games. My calf, oh, yeah, I had yeah, a torn yeah, yeah, calf. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Remember and then George wouldn't let me guard him, and then we got down 3-0, and then I guarded him, and then all of a sudden it changed the game around. Uh, his, his, his numbers dropped from 33 to 24. Mm. And I just made it hard for him to get the basketball. Why was George against you guarding him first? Foul trouble? Because he didn't want me to hurt my leg and then he wanted offense out of me. Mm. He didn't want me to tire myself out and try to, you know, do the things because he knew how hard I was going to work against Mike. Mm. And that's what I did. I just worked hard and tried to, convince, tried to prevent him from getting the basketball. Yeah. You make it hard for somebody because you know a player, he's only going to play for like eight seconds. Yep. And after eight seconds, he's going to be like, forget it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You ain't giving me the ball, I ain't working no more. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I did. You know, you know, KG, you never can stop nobody. Nope. It's nobody, a great basketball player, you can't stop it. Sure. All you got to do is try to contain it. Yep. And I think if we would have came in it not to lose, but to win, we had to change that series a little bit different. Mm. Because we got down 3-0 and then we blew them out two games in a row. Right. And then we went to Father's Day in, in Chicago and lost a tough one. Tough. We lost by five or something. And it was tough. It was tough for us to go in there and try to beat them twice. Right. And I think if we would have came in there with a different mentality, it would have been different. Because we would have stole a game in the beginning and then we would have made the game a little even, you yeah. know. But yeah. it was a great experience. I got to catch a guy when they were doing this, you know what I'm saying? And I wish we would have been different. I wish Seattle would have kept the team because we would have played them again. Mm -hmm. And then I think the next time we would have been knowing how to figure them out. 
Um, talk about, um, I know you got a collaboration with uh, Cookies, mm -hmm. and you got probably one of the better strains I called the Gary Payton strain. Shout out to Cookies. Congratulations on that, man. Thank talk you. about that whole process and how that came about. KG is just like what we were talking about earlier. Uh, me being a big brother. Mm. Burner's from Oakland, uh, from, from the Bay Area. Shout out to Burner, man, doing and, his thing. And Burner and them, they were, they were growing a strand and it came out 2020. And mm. what had happened was, he said, man, that's the OG. We gonna honor the OG. Oh, that's what's up. So then he put it together. He called me, we met. He let me do the packaging. You know, that, that, that picture on the package is for me. You in Seattle, in Seattle yeah, too. Yeah, in Seattle, in yeah. Seattle. And you know what, KG, that was just all about luck. Mm, because timing. It, it was just about luck. Mm. It was about luck of people liking me, people in the hood and the streets liking me. Loving you. And then all of a sudden, they buy a, a strand. And then the strand blows up. Bro, your And what happened is now, the glove just came out two weeks ago. Get the fuck out of here. You gotta go you check got some it new out. Shit out. I got some new shit now. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I got the glove, baby. You should have dropped the shoes with that shit. Yeah, I know. We trying to get Nike to get down with y'all seen that? I see. Did I see? Did I see that right? Did yeah, we trying to get Nike to get down with us to drop it down. The glove just came out two weeks ago. It's a dope package. I gotta go check it out. Man, it's it. good. It's in cookies, man. And you know what, KG? This stuff is taking off everywhere. You know, Paul didn't tell you, man. I went and got him. We went to Boston. You know, we, we do our pre-rolls in Boston. Same he word. ain't told you. Mine is called Peyton's Plays, and his is called The Truth. Same you word. Know, you got to tax him about it. Yeah, we be out there a lot. You get some pre-rolls from y'all, man. Y'all be holding out and shit, man. I'm going to send you all that. I'm we got to crack. You, you know what we need to do? We need to plan something. Either yeah. go to a game, chill, something yeah. like that. Let's do it. And you know it's always good. You know it's love. Always. I get all that stuff to you, man. We'll go out here to go to Cookies and run up in the store and just tear their head off. Let's get it. You know what I'm Say saying? That's what we do, man. You know Certified, what we do. man. We out of here with the, with the gloves. Yes, sir. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>